Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. My name is Taylor and I bought the cheapest RTX 4070 Ti that I could find. And this one is an MSI Ventress 3X. So it is an MSI card. It is the overclock edition. So it even is overclocked. I bought this for $755, which is well below the MSRP of $799 that are on these 4070 Ti's. And I found this one at Best Buy. It was already on sale at a discounted price. And then I applied a promotional code that I found through the Honey app on Chrome. I did not apply any personal credits or anything to lower the price further. This was just something that anyone could find on the website if they wanted and it came out to 755. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unbox this card, I'm gonna throw it in the computer, and I'm going to benchmark it. So if that sounds good, let's go ahead and get started. This video is not sponsored, and any links that I post in the description are not affiliate links. All right, the first thing we gotta do is unbox this thing. So I'm gonna get out my knife here. It is nice to see that it is protected in plastic, although the box does look a little rough. So this probably got bumped around in shipping. I hope everything inside is fine. Go ahead and pull it open, foam, open that up. And there is our card and we get a very long support brackets and we also get our adapter cable for that 12 vpr cable thing whatever it is but we're not going to be using it because i have the 16 pin connector already in my computer pulling the card out of its protected sheath and oh my goodness this actually does look very stunning quite a bit smaller than the 4080 and I'm going to put it up against it in a second but I just want to give you guys an overview of it look at the back that looks amazing the exposed circuitry there that looks really good we have the little vent fans there and cuts so that airflow can get in and the MSI logo there is the front of it we have our display ports here and then our HDMI 2.1 so now taking the 4070 Ti and holding it up against the 4080, it is definitely a lot thinner. Wow, by like almost a whole PCI slot. So now let's go ahead and get this popped in and see how it performs. Got my setup set up here. We're gonna test out some 1440p gaming and some 4K gaming on the 4070 Ti. It's been about a couple weeks since I unboxed the card, so I've gotten a little time with it. Gotta try out Hogwarts Legacy and Dead Space, so I'm gonna show off those games here. If that sounds good, let's go ahead and dive in. I also think it's important to mention that I am on NVIDIA drivers 528.49, which was released February 8th. So if you wanna compare your card to that, that's my driver date. So let's go ahead and get started. The first game we're gonna try out is Hogwarts Legacy and I am here in the menu where I have my settings here. We're set to 1440p. We're gonna go ahead and do with no upscaling at all. And we are at our 4070 Ti with motion blur disabled and then here there's most advanced settings with ultra settings completely enabled and these off so now let's go ahead and go into the game and see what our performance is like i'm going to start it out here outside hogwarts and we're currently getting 109 108 97 95 frames per second so we are above 60 frames per second in this situation we are outside so it is rendering all those details outside which is pretty heavy we'll go ahead and go in here and this is in 1440p i am running the i5 13 600k and now we are inside we're still getting about 100 frames per second and of course since we're indoors it is getting a little bit higher now let's go ahead and try with DLSS on. Now we're gonna go ahead and set our upscaling to NVIDIA DLSS. We're gonna set it to balance. So we have a balance setting there. And we're just gonna do that same run again. And now you can see that we are getting 100 frames per second, 95, 96. So we are about the same frames per second 
interestingly outside. I do think this game is a little bit CPU bottlenecks because we are not utilizing 99% of the GPU. Going inside here, we're not getting that much more benefit using DLSS, at least with the combination of the i5-13600K. Let's go ahead and try out 4K. Now we are in 4K resolution with no DLSS. We are upscaled off. So this is just pure rasterization of the 4070 Ti at 4K. We're gonna do our run again here and we're getting 47 frames per second. 46, 45. Quite a big difference from what we were getting in 1440p. It looks like we no longer have a CPU bottleneck though, so we are utilizing the entirety of our graphics card. Now let's go ahead and try with DLSS on. All right, we are now set to DLSS balanced, and now let's see what we get in 4K. And we are at 99, 94, 95 frames per second. That is a pretty big jump from what we were getting before. We were getting about 40, 50 frames per second before. Now we're getting 94, 93. That's a pretty big jump. And it still looks very nice. The image looks absolutely crazy. Now we're indoors. We're getting 100 frames per second. Let's go ahead and move on to our next game. Our next game is the new Dead Space remake, and here is our settings here. We are in full screen, 2560 by 1440, and we are at 240 hertz because it's a 240 hertz monitor. No V-Sync enabled, and if we go back here, we can see that we have our video settings here at Ultra. Our anti-aliasing is TAA, so we are not using DLSS. So let's see how this performs in Dead Space. Getting off the elevator here into this room. I'm just gonna go down this hallway. You can see that we are at 125, 120, 120 frames per second. And we sometimes dip down into 105 but it looks like we're staying above 100 here. Again, this is with the i5-13600K and the RTX 4070 Ti. And we can just open up this door here, load into another area, and we are at 108. So we're staying above that 100 frames per second with DLSS completely off. So now let's go ahead and try it with DLSS on. I'm enabling DLSS here, and we're gonna keep it at balanced. We're gonna go back into our game and we're getting a little bit of a boost. You can see we're now at 169, 187, 200 frames per second. So we are getting a DLSS boost in 1440p compared to Hogwarts because it doesn't look like we're that CPU limited anymore. You can see we're utilizing much more of our CPU, so we're getting much higher frames, 190, 203. So the DLSS in 1440p is making quite a big difference here. Now we are at 4K on Dead Space. We have our 3840 by 2160 here, and we are gonna start off with no DLSS, just pure rasterization, anti aliasing set to TAA. So let's go ahead and see what the 4K experience is like with no DLSS. And we're gonna do our same run that we did in 1440p. We're getting 54 frames per second, 55. 50, so we're hovering right around 50 frames per second. It's now let's see what it's like with the LSS on. Okay, we're gonna go from TAA to NVIDIA DLSS. We're gonna keep it at balanced. Everything else is the same. We'll go back into our game here. And now we are at 94 frames per second. 102, 106. Pretty big bump. About 40 frames per second difference. About the same jump we were seeing from 1440p to 4K in, in Hogwarts. We're seeing about the same thing here in Dead Space. 108. Oh, come on, Isaac, open the door. Pretty good. Still high refresh rate, still looks amazing. Let's go ahead and jump into our next game. 
The next game we're going to try out is none other than Cyberpunk and we're in 1440p here as you can see with that. For our graphics setting we have DL DLSS frame generation off which is going to be our DLSS 3, we'll get to that in a second. Our regular DLSS 2.0 is off as well so this is pure rasterization at 1440p and we are getting 50 frames per second, 61, 62, 55 and it's raining so we have a lot of effects going on and everything and it's 60 50 so we're hovering around that 50 60 mark so let's go ahead and we're gonna enable dlss 2.0 so we're gonna go ahead and set that to balanced we're gonna apply that and now we are getting 94 frames per second pretty big jump there Got some rain, we're dipping down into the 80s. This is with the 13600K and the 4070Ti at 1440p. So 80, 90, I don't know what that guy was doing. Driving crazy. I'm just trying to get to work. All right, yeah. And it's noticeably smoother, very, very smooth. But now let's kick it up a notch go to DLSS frame generation, which is gonna be our DLSS 3.0, which is a feature that we'll only get on the 40 series cards. Gonna go ahead and hit apply and see what we get there. Also, ray tracing is completely off for this game, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned that, but no ray tracing, ultra high settings. Now, with frame generation on, we're getting 155, 160 frames per second. And it still looks really good. You can't really tell that those frames generating are pretty much fake because that's what DLSS 3 does is it uses AI to fill in missing frames with fake frames. It still looks really, really good. And we're getting an insane 150 frames per second on all ultra settings on Cyberpunk. You know what, let's just, let's just get crazy. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn on ray tracing with DLSS three with psycho let's see what we get there on 1440p because i am curious wow ray tracing is fully maxed here with psycho settings and we're still getting above 100 frames per second with dlss3 on at 1440p rain's happening cars are happening we're crashing a lot of stuff's going on in game and we're still above 100 frames per second that's pretty crazy. All right, now let's go ahead and give it a shot in 4K. Here we are in 4K in Cyberpunk. I have it set there and in my graphics settings, I have the frame generation off and DLSS is off. So this is pure 4K rasterization in Cyberpunk and we are getting 23 frames per second, 22. It's raining, there's a lot going on, multiple cars on the road. And yeah, we're getting about 25, 26 frames per second. We are getting 30 there. So that's not too great. Let's go ahead and enable DLSS here. Set it to balanced and hit apply. And with DLSS on, we are now getting 72, 70 frames per second. That is quite a big jump. We are over that 60 frames per second threshold there. Much, much smoother. Let's go ahead and crank it up one more time. We're gonna set DLSS frame generation, which is DLSS3. That is a benefit we get with this 4070 Ti that you won't get on the 30 series. So we'll go ahead and apply that. And with that set, we are getting 105, 106. Okay, so it looks like our lows are a little bit more consistent. That is pretty significantly higher and it feels way smoother. Again, this is at 4K DLSS and frame generation. All right, with that, let's go ahead and jump into our next game. Last but not least, we are in Modern Warfare 2 and we're in our settings here for 1440p. And here are those settings, VSync off, full screen exclusive, and our quality. We're gonna start with 
anti-aliasing ultra quality with no upscaling. So no DLSS, just pure rasterization. Here's all my settings here. We have high, high, extra, high, ultra, just absolutely max, the max it can go with motion blur and depth of field, all these settings off. So let's go ahead and jump into a game, see how it performs with no DLSS at all on the 4070 Ti. All right, we're in a game of shoot house here with no DLSS and going to try to avoid dying, but I die immediately, of course. And we're getting 159, 158, 57, hovering around 150. We're in the 140s now. You could very easily play this with a high refresh rate monitor in 1440p, competitive gaming, no problem. Uh, the 4070 Ti is chewing right through it at 1440p. So let's go ahead and see if we can up our performance a little bit with DLSS and see what we get with that. All right, going into upscaling and turning on NVIDIA DLSS and going to balanced, going to apply those settings there. And now we have DLSS on. And now we are getting 200 frames per second. That is a pretty big difference. That is about 50 frames per second, 50, 50 or 40 frames per second difference there. And I can already tell it feels a lot smoother and the quality still looks very good. Now let's go ahead and jump into 4K and see what that experience is like on the 4070 Ti. Now we're in 4K on Modern Warfare 2. No DLSS enabled, this is pure rasterization. So we're gonna go ahead and try it out with Shoot House. And we're getting 85 frames per second. 82, dropping down to 70s. Uh, let's see what we get with like an explosion. Not bad, handled it pretty well. So yeah, this is relatively high refresh rate. Let's go ahead and turn DLSS on and see what we get there. All right, now we have DLSS on, set to balance. We're gonna go ahead and apply those settings there. And oh, already it's much smoother. We're <laughs> at 130 frames per second. We are above that 120 frames per second threshold. I just saw it go down to 102. Pretty high frames with DLSS set to balance at 4K on Modern Warfare 2. Again, this is the i5-13600K, which judging by our stats here, we don't have a CPU bottleneck. And yeah, we're at above 120 frames per second for the most part. So what are my final thoughts on the cheapest 4070 Ti that I was able to find on the market? Well, wow, <laughs> is all I can say. This card is really awesome. The size is really appealing. It doesn't appear to get too hot, even though it is much smaller and much more dense. The 4080 is humongous compared to this card, and it doesn't really achieve all that much better cooling in my opinion. And as we just saw, the frames per second are really amazing, even at DLSS and native 4K and 1440p. Pretty impressive figures. And you also get to take advantage of that DLSS 3.0 in games that support it with the 40 series card. And currently this is the lowest tier 40 series desktop card that you can get on the market. I think if you can get this card for under MSRP of $799 in the US, wow. Um, amazing amazing card very very good but let me know what you guys think of the card were you impressed by these figures are you interested in getting one of these cards specifically under msrp and what are you upgrading from let me know that in the comments below i think if you're upgrading from at least two generations ago like the 20 series <laughs> this this card's gonna blow you away but let me know your thoughts down below in the comments let me know if you liked the video, leave a like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more content. That's it for this video, y'all. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.